Referee Mark Smith giving some final instructions. We're going to have a brief delay. Farley Thomas did not have any tape on his, uh, on his gloves. So we're going to tape those up very quickly. If we can get this fight underway. And you've got to wonder, is this an old school stall technique? Much like Vitor Belfort not coming out of the locker room to fight Randy Couture back in the day. Or was this a legitimate mistake? Because now, Daniel Garcia, who is ready to fight, pumped up, he's got to sit here calm and try to keep his nerves under control while they fix this error. If Farley Thomas is that game two fights into his amateur career, I predict he'll be a future champion. All right, so Daniel Garcia. Both fighters wearing black trunks with red trim. Daniel Garcia has the blue tape on the gloves. Farley Thomas, the taller fighter with the red tape that was recently applied. Nice inside right, counter right from Farley Thomas. Garcia may have trouble getting inside against him if Thomas can uh, use his distance effectively. Garcia smiling, looks comfortable. There's that aggression. I was going to say, not coming forward the way we expected, but there it was. Yeah, just an absolute blitz going inside. Landed one or two punches, but now on the bottom, in a bad spot here against Farley Thomas. You know, Daniel Garcia didn't really fight that. It looked like maybe he was comfortable going to his back. But against a guy with such long limbs like Thomas, it's going to be dangerous on the ground. Farley Thomas stands out of the guard, looking to posture up and avoid any potential up kicks. Oh, tried to dive in with a big right. Danny Garcia latches on the bar. leg, going for the knee bar. And Farley Thomas is looking to punch rather than counter. He needs to be looking to change his position. That's it. Wow. And Farley Thomas, I don't think had ever been put in that submission hold or seen anything like that. Had no way or idea how to defend it. Incredible submission finish out of nowhere from Daniel Garcia. Daniel Garcia, we said it, it looked pretty willing to go to his back, and now we see why. Transition to that knee bar, that was pretty uh, pretty impressive. Farley Thomas still down on the ground. His, he's, uh, his knee may have popped. It sounded like uh, he, he was a little hurt over there. But you're right, Aaron. As we watch the replay here, once Farley Thomas was latched in this knee bar, you know, he should be doing anything he can to push down the hips of his opponent and clear his knee out of trouble. Instead, he was looking to punch and answer back. And then when your leg is in trouble, that is just not the way to go about it. That is one of the most brutal submission finishes in any kind of fighting or combat sport. If you've ever been put in a knee bar before, you, you think you feel like your whole entire knee's ripped apart and you really don't know. And sometimes it is, in fact, ripped apart. Yeah, in the amateur ranks, we, we don't allow any type of twisting submissions. So heel hooks, ankle locks, that sort of thing you can't do. But the straight knee bar, you can. And obviously, Daniel Garcia executed the straight knee bar to perfection. Farley Thomas, valuable lesson here. When you are in that position, you've got to work to clear the leg. Don't worry about punching your opponent. Don't worry about countering. You need to get your knee past his hips, basically, so that he cannot put any pressure on that leg. And Farley Thomas of, was unable to do that. And in terms of Thomas and his heart, it was him tapping. If you've ever been put in that hold, if he didn't tap immediately, his leg would have been broken in half or ripped apart. I mean, he had really no choice at that, at that time. Yeah, it's good to see Farley Thomas up under his own power. Seems to be okay now. There was some initial concern. Doctors were taking a look at it. Crowd here in Mesquite, Nevada gives him a warm reward with a nice applause. Let's take it up and get the official result of this impressive win by Daniel Garcia. Garcia.